Well, welcome to another Mem Memphis Monday. Uh, as you recall, we built another spindle sander table a few months ago, and my, my wife liked it, and she turned it into a TV stand. Well, I'm kind of glad she did, because um, today we're going to build this one. It's got built-in dust collection, uh, four drawers, it's 100% oak. It has a dedicated uh, circuit uh, that runs both the shop vac that's inside here, and the spindle sander. It's got uh, nice lockable wheels. Uh, it's it's going to be a real uh, nice addition to the shop. But we're not going to get anything done sitting here chattering. So let's knock off the chit chat and get to work. Here's the problem. Uh, this thing's biggest sin is it doesn't have any dust collection. So whenever I go to use it for any like the time I have to jerry-rig, uh, duct tape, and all kinds of stuff to, to hook a uh, shop vac to it to take a suction on it because it makes some real fine dust and it'll knock you out. So the solution I've come up with is a much wider, much wider table. It's all oak. Um, I'll have three or four drawers on this side. Uh, oak front drawers. I have a slide out here and on that slide out I'm going to rig a small, a small shop vac that will take a suction on the, uh, on the sander. First thing I have to do is install these, uh, these drawer slides here. I've uh, Spaced it up from the bottom that far, whatever that is. And I've also recessed it the thickness of this trim because I don't want the slide in the tray to interfere with the door. So now I'll just move my spacer over to that side and install this drawer runner right over here. The trick I use to make sure that these runners are exactly parallel and that my uh, slide, the drawer, is going to fit exactly between the two runners is to cut a piece of remnant exactly the size and then I can run it all the way back through there. And if it hangs up anywhere, there's been some kind of miscalculation. I'm making the little uh, sliding shelf out of uh, three quarter inch uh, plywood strips and then I'm sandwiching this uh, oak plywood on top of it. Well, we're fixing to install our slide out shelf. All I gotta do is install these runners and we'll be able to we'll be able to test drive one of the features of our uh, drum sander table. Take the thing off the jig, see if it fits. Now for the coupe de grass, let's see if this thing fits in there. Pretty slick, huh? Well, as you know, I uh, I got a method for, for lining up these things. I complete all my calculations, basically figured out where I wanted the drawers, and then I uh, convert all those measurements into little measuring blocks. And put those in there like that, and that that converts my uh, measurements into uh, real stuff. This is about the simplest way to make shop drawers that I've found. It's basically just a little box, and right here around the edge on three on three sides, there's a dado. And then this back piece 
is cut right up to the bottom of the dado. Then you take your bottom, make sure it's nice and square, slide it in. Slide it in all the way. Now it provides the bottom. Then you just nail the end down here and there you got your drawer. Let's install this thing and see what we got. There's always a wonder if it's going to fit. Here we go. All right, let me make the other three and uh, we'll go on making the drawer fronts. Shop back takes a suction. It'll be taking a suction using this tube right here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna vent that up to the top and then the exhaust through this big hole. Now the logic tells me just to put a vent out through the side and have it have it uh, vent that way. But I don't want a big hole in the side of the case. I put three holes in the uh, bottom. I put a hole through the through the side right there to equalize the pressure. And up there in the top, I put two holes, one for the uh, suction hose and one for exhaust there. So I still got a sneaking suspicion that the uh, Shop vac's going to try to blow that door open, but the only way we can test this theory is to get the door built and the drawer fronts built. So let's get to it. place right there and take a take a ice pick and make some little indentations. patience. I hate to admit it but I'm uh, I'm eyeballing these in place because my calculations aren't very good. what I'm doing here. You saw me putting the holes or the uh, marks for the drawer pulls and the drawer pulls will go just like that. So what that allows me to do since these drawer pulls have this little half moon shape here it hides these brad marks so I can put a brad in right close to that mark and it'll be hidden by the hardware. And then, of course, I will put screws in from the other side to hold this thing on permanently. I'm going ahead and installing the drawer pulls, having the drawer pulls on there. Kind of makes the uh, drawers a little easier to deal with. Well, that's... Uh, that's what she looks like so far. Let's, uh, let's uh, start working on that big door. The doors I'll be making will be similar to these uh, uh, cabinet doors here. Just slightly different uh, size. Um, the vertical pieces will go all the way. And then there'll be a small piece in here. And the, it'll be held together with... Uh, uh, Craig screws on the other side. And here's the setup for uh, putting these frame pieces together. And 
and then this door will fit right in there like that. Now I just got to glue the uh, the back on this. The only thing I got to kind of worry about is I don't want any squeeze out on the front. So I'll just put some glue right there in the middle. Okay, this uh, plywood has an A and B side. This is the B side here. And I want the A side to show. These aren't very good hinges. These are some of those hinges I, I bought on special and they were special all right. They were worthless. But maybe we'll get lucky. And of course here can't use the ice pick technique because this is oak and not as hard to screw into. It also splits real easy. Okay, let us uh, discover together whether this door is correctly installed. Doesn't look too correct to me. Well, I got the door on there and it'll close now. Let's uh, put that uh, shop back in there and see what happens. Actually, we're, uh, we're not going to put the wheels on now. We're going to uh, hook up the uh, electricity. Let me get this hole uh, cut out here. This is a pretty neat little device here if you've never seen one. It shoots these little uh, staples here uh, and you use it to uh, trice up wires and stuff like I'm going to do here. Let me get your position. Probably blocking you. But those little uh, staples can come out. So what I've done here is I've invented a little bracket here and I'll install this right up there where the wire comes through as a final uh, uh, strain relief. Now you can see that that, uh, that wire is totally secure now with that uh, piece of oak and then it's triced along the wall here. Okay, let's uh, hook up the uh, receptacle. Okay, I turned the uh, fans off so we could hear ourselves think. And I shut that, shut that door so the sparks start flying. Here we go. It's all plugged in. When I turn this uh, switch here, the uh, shop vac should come on. All right, what we got going now, before I put those wheels on, I still got to sand this thing.
I got a little stain on it. What I got to do now is uh, lighten it up a little bit so I, so I can lift it off this uh, table. To lighten it up, I'm going to take it apart. Well, I was going to brag about my low workbench here and how convenient it is to, how convenient it is to uh, work on stuff. But Houston, we have a problem. I'll just put down a little glue. These things, these little blocks will be glued and nailed. I pre-drilled and set the screws. Now it's just a matter of uh, driving in some lag bolts. Alrighty, let's launch her. started uh, our excellent little uh, spindle sand, sand table. It's not tippy, got nice nice legs, got built-in uh, dust collection. It's got its own circuit to run both the uh, shop vac and the uh, uh, and the sander. It's 100% oak. Got four little nice little drawers there. Uh, I think we did okay. All right, so uh, get excited for next week, and make sure you comment and Facebook and tweet and all that business. But the most important thing, as always, is to be back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday. Thanks for watching.